How can I help my family member or friend believe in Jesus? Hey, Pastor Tanner, I love what you do. I want to do something similar, but I don't know how to do it. Do you have any advice? Do you have any hints? Do you have any feedback? Can you help me with that? Okay. I get this question all the time, guys. And so I wanted to put together just a short lesson on evangelism. This is not meant to be completely in-depth. It's not meant to be your step-by-step -step guide. It's not meant to cover everything under the sun. Instead, it is meant to be an evangelism primer, if you will. Just a brief lesson to get you going and thinking about the right things when it comes to evangelism. And I've got three things that I want you guys to do when it comes to evangelism, okay? The first is you guys need to know the gospel, okay? You need to know the gospel and you need to know it well. The gospel itself is the bread and butter of evangelism. Okay, if you don't have the gospel understood, if you don't have the gospel memorized and in a way that you can present it in multiple fashions, you are going to struggle with evangelism. Now, to that end, we actually have a video on the gospel. It's your basic understanding of how to be saved. In that video, I explain the gospel in fairly straightforward and basic terms. Okay, and so you need to know the gospel well. Here are some major themes that surround the gospel. Sin. If people don't understand their sin, they're not going to see their need for the Savior, right? Jesus. Jesus is obviously essential to the gospel because you must repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus in order to be saved. Repentance is very, very key because without repentance, somebody is actually not turning away and they're believing in a false gospel, an easy believism, right? Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, inherits the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven, they enter. So repentance is necessary for you to get right and to spread. Finally, faith. Faith is a key idea when it comes to evangelism. You need to be able to explain faith to people. What is it? What does it mean? How do they exercise faith? Those are all very important concepts when it comes to evangelism. Okay? So... I just put this in short, know the gospel. You need to know the gospel and you need to know it well. I'm not going to explain it here. We have other videos explaining the gospel, but know the gospel, know it well, know it inside out, backwards, up, down, etc. And you need to understand what God is doing in the gospel because oftentimes he's doing multiple things. Okay. Oftentimes God is not merely saving us from our sins, but he is also refreshing. For example, he is recreating the earth in the a new way. He is bringing into effect the new Eden, the new heavens and new earth. Those are all aspects of the gospel as well. And we need to get those right. Okay. So know the gospel, watch our video on that. And I think that will help you quite a bit in your evangelism. The second thing you need to do, and this is the heart of what's going to dictate how you proceed with the rest of the conversation. You need to discern the relationship longevity and openness that the individual has. Okay, and I'm going to draw a graph for this. And I'm just going to put your standard X, Y axis here. What I want you guys to see is that how you go about evangelizing somebody is going to be partially dependent upon the relationship longevity and the openness of the individual. Let's call this longevity. What do I mean by longevity? Are you going to know this person for a very long period of time, for many years, are they a family member or close friend? Is this somebody that you're likely to have a relationship with for a very long period of time? Or is your encounter with them likely to be very, very short? That's going to affect how you do things. And then not only longevity, but the openness of the individual you're talking to. Okay. Their openness is also going to affect what you do. The longer term that you're going to have a relationship with somebody and... The more open they are, the more questions you're going to want to ask, okay? Let's call this area of the graph the question zone. Now, what am I getting at with the question zone? If you are likely to have a long-term relationship with this person, you do not need to be as urgent with the message because you are likely going to have a conversation with them for a long period of time and you want to build up a good relationship with them that is going to have a lasting impact on them, okay? The, long, the longer the relationship is likely to last, the more you should lean towards questions. This also is dependent upon their openness. The more open somebody is, the more questions you should ask them. And what I mean by openness is... is 
you know, is somebody genuinely interested in Christianity, genuinely interested in the Bible, genuinely interested in religion? Okay, they're higher on the openness chart, and so you should ask more questions to get a sense of where they're at. If somebody is lower on the openness chart, then it's going to be less about questions and more about proclamation because you're not likely to get anywhere with the questions when somebody is not very open, okay? And so in that case, you probably just need to scatter the seed, sow the seed, and let God give the increase if that's his will, okay? So the longer the relationship and the more open somebody is, the more you should lean into questions. The shorter the relationship and the less so open someone is, the more you should lean into what I'll call proclamation. If this is the question zone, then down here is the proclamation zone. Down in the proclamation zone, you don't have a lot of hope for a long-term relationship. You're, you're meeting somebody for the first time. You're likely to never see them again. You don't have time to answer every question they necessarily have, okay? In that situation, proclaim the gospel, Try to make it clear, be gentle, respectful, loving, etc., but make the gospel clear and move on, okay? There's not much you can do in terms of building a long-term deep relationship with them. And if they're less open, then you're just going to have to lean towards dropping the gospel on them and praying that the Spirit would work and move to open their eyes. That's all you can really do if they're not very open. The more open they are, the more you could kind of ask questions and different things like that. Now, what this leaves for each of the other two categories is what I'm going to call discernment, okay? In each of these ones, you're just going to need to have discernment for different reasons, but discernment nonetheless. Now, what you guys need to do with each of the discernment zones is be discerning. You're going to need to pray that the Holy Spirit would give you guidance and direction, and you're going to need to pray that God would open up their eyes. But look, someone's really open, but you don't have a lot of time with them. Well, you might have to proclaim a little bit, or you might be able to ask a question here or there, okay? Or you're going to have a long-term relationship with somebody, but they're not very open. Okay, well, you may still ask questions because you have that long-term outlook, and you know that the, your first several discussions aren't probably going to go well, but you can maybe have some more opportunities in the future. And so it might go like this, right? Your questions might bleed down a little bit in the discernment zone based upon having a little bit more longevity. You're, you're going to have to figure out what to do in each of these green areas for yourself. But when you have longevity and openness, lean towards questions. When you have no longevity or no openness, lean towards proclamation. So I hope that makes sense. How does proclamation work? Hey, man, um, I know we don't have a lot of time. But do you mind if I explain the gospel um, or the Bible in just a few minutes? I, I, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me share that with you because I love you and I want you to um, hear what God has to say, right? So that's low longevity. You lean towards proclamation. They say, yeah, sure. And you just tell them the gospel or low openness. Hey, man, I know you don't believe it. I, I know you think religion is dumb, but I'd really appreciate it if you just let me share the, the Bible with you. And if anything, now you'll have a good understanding of what Christians believe. Would you be open for me doing that? Okay, thanks. And, and you share the gospel. You're not answering a lot of questions. You know, at the end, they might go, yeah, but the Bible's dumb. I don't know why you told me any of that. But you sowed seeds. You see what I mean? Um, you're proclaiming, and you're trying to do so in as loving a fashion as possible, but you're just leaving it in God's hands in either of these categories. Whereas up here, what does question zone look like? You have a long-term relationship with somebody, or they're very open, right? Or some combination of the two. Um, Rather than you being like, hey, do you mind if I share the gospel with you? Do you mind if I tell tell you about Jesus, blah, blah, blah? You can just ask questions. Hey, um, have you ever considered Christianity? Oh, you haven't. Um, what don't you um what what don't you like about religion, right? If that's what they say, right? What what is it about religion that bothers you? Right? And just hear them out. Okay. You may never get to the point in that one conversation where you're telling them the gospel. You might just hear them out and be like, oh, that's interesting. I hear what you're saying. And then ask them further clarifying questions. So do you think the reason that some of the things that happen in the Bible are distasteful to you has to do with um, your opinion about, you know, um, the earth or, or something like that? And then they could be like, and, and they'll give you more answers. And you're just listening. Okay. You're asking lots of questions. Why can you afford to do this? Because your relationship with them is going to be more long-term. Or because they're very, very open and they're really going to appreciate the fact that you're hearing them out. 
Okay, so this is just a rough breakdown I want you to think about and where you land in here is going to kind of determine where which approach you're going to take. So ask yourself, how open is the individual I'm talking to and how long is my relationship with them likely to be? And that's going to help you decide which category you're in. Now, I want to give three good reasons to ask questions. Okay, first, it is, it is a relational thing to do. You're building a rapport with somebody. You're helping them to to see that Christians want to hear them out, want to hear what they have to say, think that they have something valuable to bring to the table too, okay? You're building a relational context with somebody which is very, very valuable. This helps you to essentially understand where they're coming from. Why do they believe what they do? We tend to put a lot of people in a box that they all believe the same things. Like if they say one thing, we're like, oh, that's what they believe. Oh, this is what they think about things. But that's not always the case. And that's not always true. So you're building a relationship with somebody and you're helping to understand where they're coming from. So that's one good reason to ask questions. The second good reason to ask questions is you're finding what they care about. Because we're all made in the image of God, we all have things that we care about that God also cares about. Okay, we all have things that we care about that God also cares about because we're made in God's image. You're looking for those things. You are like a detective searching in the heart of the individual you're talking to, trying to find out what makes them tick. What are they motivated by? What do they care about? What do they love? Right. Let me give an example. Maybe somebody you're talking to, you keep asking questions and you realize they really, really care about freedom. Okay, that's what they really care about. Like every time you ask a question, somehow it always comes back to freedom. They always keep emphasizing freedom. Now, freedom is a good biblical concept, right? We are meant to be free, okay? But the Bible says we're in bondage. We're slaves to our sin. And the only way we can be set free, Jesus says, is by repenting and believing him. And then he says, if the son of man sets you free, he, you will be free indeed, okay? That is an amazing touch point to try and get the gospel across to this person because you realize they really care about freedom. That's the stamp of the image of God on their heart and life. Now let me show you how the gospel answers your concerns or cares about freedom. Let me give one more example. Maybe you're talking to somebody and you realize over and over again that they care about the earth. They're worried. They're very worried about global warming. They want to save the whales. They're very concerned about the negative effects that human beings have on the earth and on society. They constantly are questioning pollution and different things like that. You're realizing every time you talk to them, you're realizing, man, they just really care about the earth. What can I do to speak to that? Well, the Bible actually talks about this in gospel form, right? The Bible actually says here in the book of Romans that the earth is falling apart because of sin. Romans 8, 23. Here we go. We know the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Look, here the Bible teaches that creation is fallen and struggling and it's a problem and it's groaning because of sin. So as you're talking with this person, you begin to realize, wow, they really care about this. And you can lean right into this question of sin. Hey, the Bible actually agrees with you that there's something wrong with the earth and it desperately wants it to be set right. God's goal is to recreate the Garden of Eden in the new heavens and new earth. It's going to be Eve, Eden 2.0. That's God's goal. And we're supposed to be God's stewards and helping bring that and usher that in. That's going to resonate with them so much. And then tell them, why has, why has the earth gone the way it has? It's because of sin. We didn't do our job right. We didn't steward the earth well. We didn't do any of those things correctly. We sinned against God. And that's what brought in all of this pain, difficulties, and trials. And if we'll repent of our sins, put our faith in Jesus, and trust in him, we can begin to do a better job of stewarding the earth right? That's an aspect of the gospel that has a good impact upon people here if you will look for it, okay? So you're asking questions so you can find their cares, and then I already answered the third one. How does the gospel answer their concerns? I just gave an example. That's how the gospel answers their concerns. That's why you ask questions. You've got to know the gospel, and you've got to know it well. You've got to know its ins and outs, the subtle details about it, its special facets, Know the gospel well. Know how it impacts human beings. Know what God is doing and accomplishing. Okay, 
understand the gospel and understand it well and be able to present it in multiple ways. Then ask yourself in this relationship, what is my longevity with this person? And what is this person's openness? Because that's going to dictate if you take more of a proclamation stance or if you take more of a questions stance. You're going to have to exercise discernment when it comes to that, trying to figure it out. But largely, this is going to be dependent upon the longevity of the relationship and the openness that the individual has. Finally, ask questions when possible because it helps you build relationships, see where somebody's coming from, helps you to identify their concerns as a human being made in the image of God, and helps you to show how the gospel answers their concerns. So guys, that's my evangelism primer. It is not meant to be exhaustive. I will probably do another video in the future, diving more deep into details of how to evangelize, you know, talking about the gospel more in depth and how to communicate it, you know, different things like that. But these are the details that will get you started, okay? Um, one last thing I want to say, never underestimate the power of your testimony, okay? Never underestimate the power of your testimony. Your testimony, even if you feel like you don't know the gospel very well, even if you feel like you can't answer a lot of questions, if you just humbly say, look, I, you know, I don't know a lot of detail about that stuff. I'm not as knowledgeable on that as I'd like to be, but here's what I want you to know. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Here was my life. I was not living how I want to live. And then Jesus changed me. God saved me. You have a lot of good questions. I want you to know there's answers for your questions, but I don't know them. But I want to tell you this. Here's what God did for me. Your testimony can be so powerful. And don't hesitate. If you don't know where to turn, if you don't know what to do, if you don't know what to say, don't hesitate to say something like this. Hey, I don't know the answers, but here's what Jesus did for me. I believed in him and he changed my life. And I praise God for that. And I know he can change yours too. And that's, I just want you to know the love that Jesus has shown me. I want you to know the same love, right? And that can be very, very powerful to just share your testimony in love and humility. Recognize, guys, it's not up to you to convert somebody. That's not your job. Your job is to present the good news. Your job is to share the truth. Your job is to share the gospel and leave the rest in God's hands. God is the one who has to change their heart. So just share the best you can with all the information you have and leave it in God's hands. And I think with those tools that I presented, and again, the idea to share your testimony and recognize conversion is in God's hands, not yours. I think that's going to help you out in evangelism, guys. Hey, guys, part of Christian growth and discipleship comes from engaging with one another in iron sharpening iron. If you would like to more actively engage with this community, we would love to have you. If you hit up Twitch or Discord down in the description below, we can get much more involved in the conversation and we would love to have you there. Take care. God bless. Bye now.